Maybe it is the kids, right? There wasn't, wasn't any control. control. We know it's you, Reverend. You seem to be watching us. We were right on the staircase. Once we started calling it out. All right, guys, we are back with another episode here. Tonight, we are at one of the most infamous haunted houses in the entire country. We're at the Velisca Axe Murder House in Iowa. I mean, growing up seeing this place on TV, seeing other YouTube channels hit it, it's just like really surreal being here and seeing, you know, the crime scene where this all took place. I mean, this place is infamous, like you said. Yeah, it's one of those things where, you know, we go to a lot of places with some really dark history and a lot of people have died there and stuff. This is different though. This is a small little farmhouse in Iowa and you had eight people brutally murdered and six of them were children. And I think that really plays, a, you know, a factor in the feelings that you get when you walk inside this house, even before the activity starts. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, it takes a really sick person to do something like that. So I'm interested to see what we're going to get tonight. Um, let's just get into it. Let's get in there. Guys, tonight we're the site of one of the most infamous unsolved murders in American history. We are at the Velisca Axe Murder House. Now, the house was built in 1868, and by 1903, the Moore family had moved in. The Moore family consisted of J.B. Moore, his wife Sarah, and their kids, Herman, Catherine, Boyd and Paul. Now unfortunately the family would only live in the home for about nine years. Now on June 10th 1912 a crime would take place here that would shock the country and make this house what it is today. The Moore family had been attending some activities at the local church all day. They returned home that evening along with some friends of the kids Lena and Ina Stillinger, some neighborhood girls. It's believed they got home around 10 p.m. and all got ready for bed. Just two hours later around midnight a murderer using an axe from the property murdered all eight people sleeping inside the house. It's believed that the murderer started upstairs with the parents of the family, starting with JB, who was 43, and Sarah, who was 39. The murderer then went down the hall to the kids' room and killed Herman, who was 11, Catherine, 10, Boyd, 7, and Paul, 5. Before heading downstairs, the murderer actually stopped at the top of the staircase and actually let a pool of blood form from dripping off of the axe. He then went down to the bedroom on the first floor and killed the Stillinger girls, Lena, age 11, and Ina, age 8. Before leaving each of the bedrooms after killing the victims, he actually would take the bloody bed sheets, cover the windows, drape something over the mirror, and light a kerosene lamp in each and every room. After he had murdered everyone in the house, he then vomited, cleaned off the axe, set it on the floor, and just walked out. To this day, we don't know who did the Velisca axe murders. Despite not knowing who committed these awful crimes, there are a number of different theories and ideas behind the possible motivations for the murders. One being that J.B. Moore himself was the primary target. So that would mean somebody came here that night to kill J.B. Moore and ended up killing the other seven people in the house, basically to cover their tracks so that they couldn't be identified after the fact. Now a second theory is that there's some sort of sexual motivation to the murders. However, there was never any evidence found that would suggest that that's actually the case. A third theory exists that basically says there is a serial killer in the U.S. traveling by train state to state committing awful murders only to escape the next day using the train system. Now a summit of law enforcement officials met in Villisca trying to connect this possible serial killer to the axe murders, but no connection was found. One major problem is that this investigation was pretty much boshed right from the beginning. People were able to come and go from the crime scene throughout the day without any issues, just walking around, contaminating everything. Now, when they contacted a fingerprint analyst to come in and study the crime scene, he actually showed up incredibly intoxicated and deemed that the killer had left no fingerprints anywhere in the house. Now, many suspects were identified in the case. The most prominent one that stands out is probably Reverend Kelly. Now, he was a traveling pastor. He lived about 40 miles outside of Villisca and he was here the night of the murders. Coincidentally, he caught a train home the following morning. Now on the night of June 10th, 1912, Reverend Kelly says that he couldn't sleep. So he got up in the middle of the night and just started kind of walking around town, first heading towards the church before turning off and heading towards the Moore's house. He said upon approaching the Moore's house, he saw a shadow figure outside, which he then followed inside the house after grabbing an ax. He said he went right upstairs into the Moore children's bedroom, killing them first before moving out of the parents and the Stillinger children downstairs. 
Now, Kelly was later acquitted of his crime in an 11-1 vote at his trial. 110 years later, we still don't know who committed the Velisca Axe murders as no one's been convicted of this crime. As far as the paranormal goes here, you get a little bit of everything that you would expect at a haunted house. You get the disembodied voices, shadow figures, full body apparitions, things moving on their own, doors slamming, pretty much anything that you, know, you would run into in a typical haunted location. This place does get a little darker than that though. It does have a mental toll on people. It's said that temperament changes, you get angry, you get sad, you feel the emotions of the house. One investigator here actually stabbed himself during an investigation. So. We've never really encountered something as dark as this house. I'm looking forward to see what we can capture tonight and uh, see what challenges we face. Yeah, it's one of these locations that you know we've known about for a very, very long time. It's kind of surreal to be here and be walking around in the location after seeing it for so long. Uh, but it's one we're gonna have to keep our guard up. Like you said, we've never really tackled anything like this before. This is a whole new kind of investigation for us where a lot of people don't believe that the family is actually in this house. You're, you're kind of dealing with the house itself and the mind games that it plays, whether the killer's here or not. Um, you know, so we're just have to keep an eye on our emotions, how we're feeling, you know, just be smart tonight while we're investigating and see if we can unravel the mystery of Aliska a little bit while we're here. I think we just need to get inside and uh, see if we can get to the bottom of it. Let's do it. All right, guys. We are officially inside. We're starting out on the first floor. Um, right now we're in the living room area, right outside the bedroom where the Stillinger girls were murdered, uh, Lena and Ina. So we have an EDI meter set up in that room. We have a cat ball set up behind me. We have the music box set up in the kitchen pointing at the staircase. Um, and we're gonna do some GR60 sessions and just kind of try to see really who is haunting this house or what. Um, you know, a lot of investigators and people that have come here over the years don't actually believe that the family or any of the murder victims are here. They think the house is almost haunting itself with the memory of the, the tragic murders that took place. And, you know, it almost plays mind games with you to the point where it does things and you get evidence to scare you. So they've gotten recordings of what sounds like an ax being swung and people screaming and running around when that's not what happened, but it is a scarier sound and a scarier outlook on it. So it's like the house tries to intimidate you um, or whoever, whatever's haunting the house tries to intimidate you. So we're gonna try to see if we can figure out who or what is actually here and why it does what it does um, as far as paranormal activity goes. So I think we should just get into it. We'll, we'll try to get them to interact with some of this stuff and uh, see what happens. Yeah, get our DR60s going and see what's going on. So Something to think about too, there was actually a citywide blackout during that yeah. time. The city and the electric company couldn't come to an agreement. So this is what the house would have looked like during the time of the murders too. Like I mean, this. Literally, exactly like that. Um, we have an LED candle set up right here. Um, they've been known to interact with those. Yeah, we'll move so, that around too. We'll put it on the bed. We'll do all that kind of stuff because they, they acknowledge the fact that it's a flame and it's a candle and you might burn the house down kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm just super curious to see like what activity we get. Absolutely. And who it might be. Yeah. So I think we just get into it Let's now. Let's do it. So if there's anybody in this house and you can hear our voice, my name is Steve, this is Dylan. We're just here to talk to you, whoever you are. Can you make your presence known by making a noise or going up to one of our pieces of equipment? Anything you can do to let us know that you're here. Swingers in the room. Yeah. Swingers in the room. Yeah. Swingers in the room. Yeah. I feel like a footstep. Yeah. Are you in that room just before us? Where the Stillinger girls were? Can you make that noise again for us if you were? That was louder. Yeah. That was louder. Yeah. That was louder. Yeah. I also forgot we also put a REM pod in the closet in that room True. as well. And the, the gentleman that um, was affected here a couple years ago now, and I remember when this story happened, mm -hmm. um, he was investigating in this bedroom over here, and 
he said he saw a flash of light in that closet and then the next thing he knows he woke up in the hospital because he's he stabbed himself yeah um our tour guide here earlier today johnny uh lives next to the building he's been coming here for over 20 years he knows his house better than anybody uh he said you know talking to this guy it was just like talking to me or you he was very calm very normal level-headed guy before the investigation and he said it wasn't like he did something subtle for mm -hmm. attention or you know draw headlines he's like he stabbed himself in the chest with, with a, a big, sizable with knife. a big knife like yeah. an actual stab in the chest um and he blacked out and he doesn't remember it and that's it's kind of scary i mean it's it shows you the power that a place like this can have um so we put the rempot in the closet for that reason because that's where he saw the the light right before all that happened um, and we want to point out too we're standing in the living room which is right here near the front door which is where the the killer left he walked out that door and depending on whose story you listen to reverend kelly would have walked in that front door Correct. as well so even though somebody wasn't necessarily killed in this room, um, it's a focal point for the activity. I mean, the ax was left right in here. Um, they left and entered through that door, as That's far right. as we know. So it's a, it's, a, it's a pretty important area in the house. Yeah. I find it interesting that those noises have stopped. Yeah. It only happened right when you asked it to, and it was louder. Absolutely. Because it's not one of those, like, oh, the house is just creepy right. sort of thing. It hasn't done it since. No, it hasn't made, and it hasn't made a noise all night. Yeah. We've been in and out of here a thousand times already tonight, you know, setting up stuff, getting the cameras ready, um, doing the tour earlier, mm -hmm. and it didn't creak, it didn't pop. It's a pretty quiet house, actually. Right. So just to confirm again that you made that noise in the Stillinger girls' room, can you knock on the wall, stomp your feet, do whatever you just did? That's the easiest way for you to communicate with us. Reverend Kelly. The main suspect of these terrible murders. Did he get away with murder? Or was he innocent? If the killer is here, make yourself known. You don't get to hide from what you did. Murdering eight people with the blunt side of an axe. It's a brutal crime. Six kids. Those footsteps? I heard that. Yeah. That's something like behind us. Yeah, either behind us or upstairs. No one deserves what you did. Especially not children. You had to have known what you did was wrong. You got sick. And then you never came forward, never admitted to your crime, never faced punishment. I hope your life was hell. Another knock back there. Yeah. I hope your life was hell. Another knock back there. Yeah. I hope your life was hell. Another knock back there. Yeah. A hundred and ten years and they're still looking for you. EDI. EDI went off? Yeah. What'd it do? Uh, pressure. Make sure I'm moving into the room? Yeah. Can't see. Very dark in here, guys. Yeah. Very, very dark. Got the mirrors covered, so. You murdered two innocent little girls in this room while they were asleep. Could you not bear to look at yourself after you'd done this? Is that why you covered all the mirrors? That was weird. What's that? My back just got really tight. Like left Lower side. my back. Bottom left of my back. Yeah. It's super, it feels like I like pulled a muscle. Literally, yeah. I, it's super like, it literally is just like super tight. That's something they reported stiff. though. Yeah, I know. You know what I mean? Like Johnny said that earlier and I wasn't even thinking about it until I literally just turned and it feels like I like. It feels like I pulled a muscle. Yeah, literally. it's super stiff. It's like. 
I was just thinking it's almost like an gonna, ache, like a muscle yes, ache. Literally, bottom like right here in the bottom left of my back, right there. That's so weird. I was literally just getting ready to crack my back. Yeah, I feel the same it's thing. It's like it literally feels like I like pulled a muscle. That's crazy. And guys, that's not from like being in the car. We had a two-hour drive today. Yeah, an hour and a half. It easy drive, easy. very yeah. easy. And we've been like we've been out walking around all day. It's not like we had a twelve-hour drive and just got out of the car and walked right in. Like right. That is so weird, Ashley. It's super tight. Is this what you do to people when they call you out? You try to harm them? Mess with their heads? Discourage them from continuing? We're not going anywhere. If you're so powerful, make some noise for us. Set off one of these devices, knock something over. That was like, like a closet. tap. Yeah, yeah. It was in the closet. Is so, that where you hide? In that closet? So that closet, guys, is right under the main staircase, too. That's the weird thing, too, right? Like, they don't know if this person was in the house when they got home already, or if they appeared, like, if they came later and right. entered the house. Um, you know, because the family was gone all day. One of, the, one of the leading ideas is that the person had already entered the house and was waiting upstairs in the attic. Right. Um, but you don't know. I mean, we, nobody... That's the craziest thing about it, right? Like, eight people were murdered, and we don't know anything. Literally nothing. It's like a... Literally, it's like a ghost came in here, killed these people, and just disappeared. Yeah. I mean, it... Eight people. Gone. Yeah. One night. It's insane. I wonder, like, if us calling them out, um, they're obviously a coward, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, yeah. they don't like confrontation. They that's don't why like it's hiding in the closet. You know what I mean? Or that's yeah. why it's not right out here in our face right now, right? right. It, it attacked people when they were sleeping, whoever it was. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. It's. I'm trying to think of what's going to be the best approach tonight, right? So, because right. it's like, does it wait until we go to bed to start doing stuff? Right. When we're vulnerable and sleeping, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Or when we're not expecting it. I don't know. It's, that's the thing about investigating a place like this, that it's so different from everything else. It's not a prison or right. uh, an asylum or something like that, where, you know, you have all of this reason behind whatever happened in these places, right? It's a senseless crime. Yeah. Right, and it's a house. Right. I don't know, it's, it's so hard. And, and, and there's nobody held responsible, so you don't even know who to call out. Literally. I don't know. I don't know what the approach should be tonight. Because honestly, like earlier, it felt weird in this house. It did, yeah. And we start calling it out, and it doesn't necessarily have that same vibe. Mm -mm. It feels pretty calm right now. Where'd you go? When we first got here, you seemed to be watching us, following us around the house. Why are you backing away now all of a sudden? Is your back still tight? Because mine, yeah. mine is for sure, like in that same spot. Mm -hmm. I feel the need to keep like looking behind me though. Yeah, I keep thinking. I, like, I, I'm expecting something to just be there. Yeah, and it's like, I can't tell if it's my eyes playing tricks on me, but there's been a couple of times when I've looked out there, mm -hmm. and, because I can't see that window unless I lean like this, right? Right. So like, all I see is dark, Yeah. but there's been a couple of times where I've looked, and I'm like, it looks like somebody's just standing there. You know what I mean? Like Watching us from a distance. But then I, I don't know if it's my eyes. Yeah. So I don't really acknowledge it. Um, Try to do your 60 session, maybe? Yeah, let's let's try one. I think we go right into questions, yeah. right? Like, and just try. Sorry for it. Fun. To each, probably? Yeah. Let's do it. All right. Let's focus on just one right now. Yeah. Um, we can break both of them out later, probably, but... See if we can pick up Let's on focus one. on one recorder. Mm. Um, and just ask a couple... Let's do three each. Okay. And let's do it. Yeah, let's see. Mm 
Who is in this house? Are you watching us from the kitchen? Why did you cover the mirrors? Did you make my chest tight when we were upstairs earlier? Say one of our names. Are you going to try to scare us tonight? One, two, three. Knock from the kitchen. Yeah, it's out in that area. All right, let's play this back. So get out. It's too so nice. Yeah. Are you watching us in the kitchen? Why did you cover the mirrors? Did you make my chest tight when we were upstairs earlier? Say one of our names. Wanna play that guy? Yeah. Yes, I, I did. I can hear there's Why something. Did you make my chest tight when we were upstairs earlier? Say one of our names. Are you going to try to scare us tonight? One, two, three. Nothing else to do. No. Sounds like I said, yes, I did. Um, I want to do another one. Yeah. Yeah, I want to do another one. Same thing, let's ask like three questions. Yeah. See if we can get something, a clear response. Yeah. One, two, three. What did you do in this house? Can you say that, what the town we're in? Say something that will scare us. Are you trying to hide from us? Are you scared? Why did you do it? What's the killer's name? clear no nothing super clear i think what we do is we move upstairs mm -hmm. um we start out in the parents bedroom area and the hallway where the moore family was killed yeah. um we we'll see what we can get up there and uh after that we'll go into the attic see what happens and then we'll just keep going we'll just yeah. keep finding some answers hopefully let's, do it. let's go Really quick guys, we hope you're enjoying the video. If you are, make sure you drop down below, give us a thumbs up, give us a like. If we get 3,000 likes on this video, we're gonna head to the Winchester Mystery House, spend the night doing an investigation. So make sure you drop down below and give us a like. All right guys, so we're on the second floor of the Velisca Axe Murder House. Currently we're standing in the parents' room. So as you can see, they're all kind of connected. Um, the attic is just to the left. And as we said earlier, one of the main theories is that someone hid up here. They were in the house the entire time. They didn't have to break in. And then when the family came home and fell asleep, that's when the murders took place. So maybe we can try to see if we can contact the family. Um, did you hear something? Yeah. 
Because I feel like downstairs, whoever it was was very reluctant to speak with us. Yeah, just her like movement. So we have a few things set up here. We have the Eddy over here in the kind of the entrance to the kids' room. We have the Dior 60s as always. We have cat balls, um, and as well as the Ovulus. And there's a flashlight set up down in the bed um, in the more children's bedroom where they were all killed. Um, so this is the room where JB and Sarah were murdered. The bed was over here. There's actually still a mark um, on the ceiling from where he was bringing the ax back and forth. You can actually see where the ax hit the wall um, during his attack in here. Same thing in the children's bedroom, which you'll see when we get down there as well. We'll point that out. Um, it's just like a crazy reminder, right? Like it makes it real. It's not just a story anymore. You can actually see um, marks from the attack, which is unreal. Um, but it just makes it that much more real and more, you know, personable, I guess, than Absolutely. just a story about people that lived 100 years ago. It's one thing to read it in a book, but to, right. see, to see the actual scene and the leftover, like, actual evidence from it yeah. is, is pretty crazy. Not only do you have the obvious possible haunting from what occurred here, mm -hmm. um, but one of the guides here... The head guide here, Johnny, who's been coming here for 20 years, yep. actually has a doll that's in this room over here, which we'll show you after. You just hear that? What? Something, like someone was right on the staircase. Like they were trying to sneak up the staircase yeah, and then it creaked. No, I So didn't. they kind of leaned into it. I that didn't. was actually wicked eerie. I didn't hear it at all. I was too busy talking. <laughs> that was kind of, that was freaky though. Well, I just heard movement over there too, remember? Yeah. Um, so he got this doll that he found on the side of the road mm -hmm. and he sent it to a bunch of different haunted locations. Um, actually, Madison Seminary, which you guys have seen on our channel, it was sat there for months and kind of gained energy from those places. And then he brought it back here and he filled it with dirt from different haunted locations and murder scenes around the country, along with, you know, other objects and stuff like that for a little while and then took them out. And the doll apparently moves. They put, somebody put a voice recorder on a necklace around it and left the house and they came back and heard audio of like, little feet pitter pattering around the house and it would set off the REM, you could hear the REM pods going off in different parts of the house. And they heard like a mechanical laugh almost from this doll. So that's right in this room as well. So that's an added thing up here. Um, yeah, I think if that starts running around, I'm gonna head out. There's that's... no thinking. If that thing runs around out the window, I'm going back to New York yeah. and I will never come back to Iowa again. <laughs> Ever. Ever. No offense. Don't move, please. Why am I standing near the door? Good luck. <laughs> I will jump over that staircase. Um, also, this door right here to the attic was caught on camera on uh, an episode of Ghost Adventures years ago when they came here slamming by itself when nobody was in the house. They're out in the barn reviewing evidence and this door slams. You can actually hear footsteps like coming up to it beforehand. So hopefully something crazy like that happens while we're up here. Yeah. Um, but we'll see. If there's anybody up here with us, we have multiple devices up here. You've probably seen them before. We understand a lot of people come through this house, try to make contact with you, ask you some questions. As we said downstairs, we're here to do the exact same thing. My name's Dylan. This is Steve. We just want to learn more about you, the house, and what happened here. If you're willing, can you make a noise for us or set off a piece of our equipment? What happened here? What is that? I don't know. Sounds like it's on the stairs. Yeah. Are you coming up the stairs to see us? Yeah. And it's getting louder. Yeah. <laughs> so it's getting closer. Yay. <laughs> Fantastic. That's the craziest thing about this. Like, I know we keep talking about it, but nothing about this murder makes sense. Mm -mm. Even back then, this house has wooden floors. It was already 50 years old yeah. or 40 years old at that point. It's going to be creaky. Right. How do you sneak around a house to the point where you don't wake anybody up? How do you bludgeon eight people? Right. And nobody gets up. It makes no sense. No. We've been told that you try to mentally affect people. Does that give you some sort of power? Do you like scaring people? Making them feel bad? Pressure. 
on the outer. Yeah. Do you want to use that orange box right there? Or the box of the orange lights? I feel like we got downstairs and like being washed in the kitchen. Yeah. Getting it from in there now in the attic. The attic area? But like not all the way in. Like I feel like I'm going to look up and there's going to be somebody right in this door. That's what I felt. Yeah. Like literally right here. I don't feel like, I don't feel like it's like a, like a negative. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like I don't feel like the killer is standing in the doorway or anything like that. Right. I feel like there's going to be somebody standing there. It's a weird sensation. Like I find myself like I keep looking over there. Yeah. I was doing the same thing. I was looking in the living room. Let's step into the kids' room for a minute. Let's we leave fine. everything down here. Let's just step into here. Yeah. Hey guys. Are there more children in here? I don't know if you could hear us. My name's Steve. This is Dylan. We're friends. We just came to talk to you. Are your friends Lena and Ina downstairs? That was up here. Yeah. That was like in the hallway. Yeah. Excuse me? What was that? I don't know. Is that a metallic, whatever it yeah. was? It was in the hall. Can you make that noise again? What was that? What was that? What that you know what it sounded like? What? The little metal bucket in front of the doll. Oh, that's awful. In yeah. the attic? Yep. That's literally what that sounded like. That's pretty awful. There's, so there's a metal bucket in front of the doll in there that like people have left stuff in, like dollar bills and candy and toys and there's a letter in there that somebody wrote to the doll um that's what it sounded like yeah like flicking the bucket or something like somebody yeah. hit the bucket can you make that noise again do whatever you just did the footsteps yes if that thing moves there's literal movement out there it's like walking that's me yeah Hello? What was that? It sounded like fucking running. It was quick, yeah. Yeah, it sounded like literally like running, but it sounded downstairs. Yeah. It was like... Drum, 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 drum. If you're downstairs, can you come up to talk to us? What is that? I don't know. It's not like it was in here, though. So if everybody says, like, they don't think the family's here. Mm -hmm. Most people have said that. They don't think the family's here. They don't necessarily think the killer's here. Right. This is the whole idea of like a thought form. Right. You know, did, the negative, negative did the negative thing that happened here create a negative energy mm -hmm. in this house? Like, is there like a black cloud hanging over this house? Right. Um, so it's not necessarily like an intelligent spirit of a person per right. se. Um, it's the negative energy from that moment in time creating. That's my watch. Okay. Um, you know, it's a negative moment from that time creating this haunting almost 
where the house is haunted by its past, not by a person. Right. Yeah, because people say that it tries to find something that will make you scared. Right. It says yeah. things to people that it shouldn't know. Right. Like there's there's naming people that have never been here mm -hmm. that were tied to different investigators or you know whatever it's going on at the time. Talking in people's voices who aren't here. Right. All right. What do you say? Why don't we do some dr sixties? Yeah. Um, see if we can talk to whatever whoever might be up here. Right. It's been super weird so far tonight. Um, cause like when we first got here, the vibes were super off. Like it felt weird in this very house. Very oppressive. Very, very uncomfortable. The feeling I got in here, 10 times worse than anything I felt at Sally house. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? And like Sally's supposed to be the peak of like negativity and all that kind of stuff. And, right. and then the vibes in here just felt super weird. And, and it seems like there's something hanging around. It's just like lurking in the shadows. It's distant. Yeah. And, and I don't know if that's because it's, maybe it is the kids, right? Mm. And they're. They're scared. nervous, right? They're yeah. nervous of two people being in their house as they should be at this point. Absolutely. Um, or is it the killer? And he's intim he doesn't like when people confront him and he's intimidated. Right. Is it none of that? Is it just residual energy? Right. Like, is it just a vibe of the house? Yeah. Um, there's but so many like factors playing into this. Right. Like, again, there's, what, 50 years, 60 years of history before the murders? Before the murders, right. And... You know, it's there's something hanging around. Right. It's not setting off the equipment or anything. Mm -hmm. um, but it's lurking. It's there. We hear these little knocks, these little footsteps, the the weird whispers, the the feeling of being watched, but from a distance, that kind of stuff. Right. I don't know. It's it's so confusing on how to approach it. But I think we try some DR sixties. And uh, see if we can get it to talk to us at least. Maybe. And yeah. figure out what it's. What it wants. Who it is or what right. it is, at least. Um, yeah. yeah. Let's, let's go for it. So like two or three each? Yeah. I think we should do two or three each. All right, let's do it. One, two, three. Give us your name. Are you scared of confrontation? Are you waiting? To do something that's going to scare us? How do you want to talk to us? What's easiest for you? Were you hiding in this house when they got home? Why are you still here? What's your motive? One, two, three. Let's see. Give us your name. What? Give us your name. Give us your name. It's three syllables. Give us your name. Give us your name. You're not talking? Give us You're not talking. Something like that. Yes? Like, yes. Are you waiting to do something that's going to scare us? How do you want to talk to us? What's easiest for you? Are you hiding in this house to do something that's going to scare us? How do you want to talk to us? What's easiest for you? Are you hiding in this house when they got home? What? Let's say get out? Were you hiding in this house when they got home? Get out of here? Why are you still here? What's your motive? Not clear. Like a weird yell, but... Yeah. Did you know? I think so, because that's the loudest it's gotten so yeah, far. Yeah, it's like it's getting more comfortable. Right. Maybe it's getting used to us being here. Right. Whoever it is. All right, so we're going to ask you a few more questions. I'm not sure if you've realized by now, but that little gray box that Steve is holding, it's a voice recorder. So if you speak into it, we should be able to hear you. I just got full body chills. 
And it's not cold in here. No. It's actually pretty nice. I got full body chills. Like started at my shoulders, went all down my whole body and like right through my legs. Hopefully that's a good sign. That was weird. All right, let's do another one. Yeah. One, two, three. What was used in the crime that was committed here? Why did you cover all the mirrors? Who did you attack first on June 10th, 1912? Can you tell us whose room this was? Who slept in here? One, two. It's starting to feel a little weird up here. Yeah. I wonder if, like you said, they're getting comfortable with us. Because, I mean, you got to think a bunch of random strangers coming in your house asking right. you questions. They're going to be reluctant, right? Right. If it's the family. Yeah. If it's a killer, I mean, it's not his house. Yeah. You know, so it's like, I don't know. Well, even so, if it's a killer, it's like, why are you here? Right. It's you getting know? that weird, like, Enclosed. being watched from out here feeling again. Yeah. And it didn't have that mm -mm. a few minutes ago. Let's try it. Yeah. What was used in the crime that was committed here? Why did you cover all the mirrors? Who did you attack first on June 10th, 1912? Can you tell us whose room this was? The kids? It was like I don't know it something. Like the kids. kids. It was like, I thought it just said the kids and then something, something, and I couldn't make out the end there. Right. It sounded like the kids and then I don't know, yeah. something. I think what we do is, right, so the, one of the main leading ideas about the killer was that whoever it was was hiding in the attic when they got home. He was already in the house. Right. Why don't we go into the attic and do an SS session? See if we can communicate that way. Right. That might be easier for them to, to come forward. Yeah. Ready? Let's do it. All right, guys, so now we're in the attic of the Velisca Axe Murder House. Um, we're gonna try an Estes method. So again, if you guys don't know what that is, I'm gonna be listening uh, to a spirit box, basically just scanning a bunch of radio stations really fast. Um, I'm gonna say whatever I hear. Steve's gonna be asking questions. I'm gonna put my beanie over my face so I can't see him. Um, I'm not gonna be able to hear him because I have these on. So hopefully we can get some people to talk to us. Yeah, and we have a ton of equipment set up throughout the upper floor here. Mm -hmm. We have an EDI meter on the ground right here. We have a millimeter in the doorway right here, another one in the second door, and then there's actually one down to the left in the uh, the children's bedroom. And we have the ovulus right there, and then the music box is pointing at the stairs out in the uh, parents' bedroom. So we have this place blanketed right now, and we'll just kind of see if we can get anything. Um, so far tonight, none of the equipment has gone off. No. At all. So, hopefully they'll. Hopefully the yeah they'll get some stuff up here, especially with it like spread out like that. Maybe they'll be a little more comfortable. Because yeah. like we said, things have been feeling like they've been like lurking mm -hmm. around us. So. Oh. That's the one closest to us. Right yeah. There. Can you step away from that, please, so it stops making that noise? You just gotta back up. Thanks. Why? Holy we God. come in the attic. All right. So I'm gonna put these headphones on. Yeah. Go for it. So again, this is kind of where it is believed that the killer may have hidden here while the family was gone. And then when they got home and went to sleep, he, he snuck out and, and committed the murders. So, we'll see. Give me a second. 
crawl space. Crawl space. Where are the crawl space? Okay, that's two of them going off. That's the one in the. Give me a second, and then crawl space. So that was like it started in the kids' room. Went Got to it. Right outside the door, and now it's here. Can you set this one off inside the room? This one right here on the ground, the closest one to me. Okay, so that's that one again out there. Oh shit! Now it's that one. Oh my See God. me? Um, I, th I mean, I think I know you're right here. Are you standing in this door? Step away from that, please. So it I'm, stops. I've been damaged, or I'm something damaged. Thank you. Is the killer here right now? If the killer's here, can you set off one of those devices? You can come in. Or you come in. Snagged it. Oh my god. That's this one right here. I died. Step away. Step back if you're the killer and you murdered this family. Step back now. So it stops. It was like a woman crying. What the fuck was that? I don't care. I can't tell if my camera just captured. Oh, that was, is that like someone like was like pulling up flam, like honking a loogie, like yeah. with phlegm in the throat? Disgusting. I can't tell if that was my camera casting a shadow. It literally just looked like that's in the kids' room. It literally just looked like something sad poked around the Alaska. Corner. Can you give me your name? Oh my god. The axe murderer? There was literally some knocks out there. I said, can you give me your name? He said, the axe murderer, and then this goes off. Holy shit. All day. Um, uncomfy right now. Step away from that, please. Step back so that stops. Now. Step back. You don't scare us. You do not scare us. Now there's someone out there. Like it stepped back. Step back again. Good. So you're the killer, huh? Holy shit. That's one in the kids' room. It's like getting more garbled. Like the um, the skipping is starting to drown out the voices. That's, that, that's all the way back in the kids' room now. Get out of their room. If you're the killer, get out of their room. Me? Yes, you. If you're the killer. I'm, it was like I'm and then scratch. It was two different voices. Why did you do that? I'm like behind him. Oh. And I was like, I was like, I'm like behind him forever. Two different voices again. The doll's behind him. I don't like it up here right now. The vibe has completely changed. <laughs> Those are footsteps. Completely changed. <laughs> Completely changed. Those are footsteps. Those are footsteps. Go home. Oh god. Steve, that was a woman's voice. Oh good. There's Hi. Steve. Man's voice. All three of them are going off. All three of them are going off right now. All Steve again, man's voice. Oh my god. That's You're the rem. Playing? That's the rem. The rem. I just touched the rem. He said they were playing. Step back from this one. Step back. That rem is going off out there. Oh my god, I don't know if you can see it on the camera. Something later. I don't know if you can see it on the camera. It's pinging. What is the... 
What the fuck was that? Oh my god. Holy shit. Stand back. Holy shit. It just felt like something was touching my back. Like smoke something? It just felt like something was touching my back. I... Oh my... It literally... I, oh, I thought it was this. I thought I was touching this. And then I realized how much lower I was to the ground than that. That was a literal hand that? on my back. Sit down. That was a literal hand on my back. Holy shit. Do it. Okay, okay, I'm sitting down. It's fun, sit down. I'm sitting down. I cannot believe that hand on my back. That was like really... That's this one. Oh my god. Oh, that was weird. It was like a male's voice got wicked loud. It drowned out all the other voices. There's two of them going off again. Oh, the uh, same voice just laughed. Oh my god. Did you touch my back? Was that your hand on my back? Where did he go? Where did who go? Behind. I'm something. It was like three words. The hundred dollars behind Dylan. When I tell you that this place is arbitrarily, a, when this place is at a complete 180 from being standoffish and relatively quiet to a physical hand on my back and now constant equipment activity. Oh my god! They just touched. Still the there? Yeah, we're still here. We're still here. Okay, that's this one again. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Did you hide in this room before committing the crime? Yep. Oh my god. Mass murderer. Oh my god. Give me the name of the person you attacked in this house first. Who was it? Somebody. Yeah. Do you, know, do you not know their name? Do you not know the names of the people that you killed? Were they strangers to you? That's super interesting. I never thought of that actually. Like if they were strangers, he would Behind be. you? Please don't. Room. Oh my god. Sound like that Steve, woman's voice. Step back from that. Step back from that. Sound like a woman said burr. Step, I feel that. Step back from that. Warm up. Warm up. And that's Strange. The, that's the one out there again. They're both going off again. That is fucking Someone's crazy. there or something's there? Yeah. This is fucking crazy. Thing. This is absolutely crazy. That's the one in the kids' bedroom again. We have to sleep up here tonight. Wait, friends. Died. Their friends died downstairs. If the murderer is still up here. Yeah. Set off one of those devices again. If the person responsible for the crime is still up here. This just got scary. Is he? Oh my god. There's walking. There's a little walking out there. Are you coming in here? Holy shit. You don't have to... something. I'll do it. I don't even know what to ask right now. I'm like... Confused. Oh, okay, that's the other one again. Clear. That's the one out by the, uh, the kids room again. I fucking hate this doll. I keep getting really like weird feelings. Like In that. bed? Maybe. Something bad. Something in the bed. Can 
Can you touch the top of that device out there so that it lights up and changes colors? Oh my God, I just heard a voice. And changes colors. Oh my God, I just heard a voice. And changes colors. Oh my God, I just heard a voice. That was a deep male voice. You know voice. how this goes? That was a deep, 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 deep male voice. That was weird. Oh my God. Oh. 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 My. God. What? You went? The actual fuck was that? I don't, um... What the... What was that? I am very on end right now. Told you? Or told? Step away from that. Holy shit. That's the closer one this time. It's outside the room. Again? Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Thank you for... The guy yelling in the background. I'm going to pull him out in a second so he can hear the shit. I'm going to pull him out. Just listen. Take it off, turn that off, and just listen. What? Just listen. It's very different up here. All of these have been going off mm -hmm. on command. We had all three of them going off at once. Oh, and... Man. And the REM function in the one in the bedroom. You could see it lighting up the wall in here and hearing it ping. Somebody grabbed the top of it. Um, that was my head. Oh, I heard a voice. I don't know what it said, but it was one of the worst voices I've ever heard in my entire life. There's been footsteps, knocks, all kinds of movement out there. Like directly outside here? Or was yeah. It downstairs? No, right in that hallway. Okay. Why? Well, I wonder if it's because we were like separated, you know? Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm physically here, but it not. took a complete 180, dude. Like. All right, that's still there. That's a good thing. Yeah, I kept an eye on that. Um, because you kept saying behind you. Yeah, I didn't like that. No. The first thing I thought of was like, if that doll moves, I'm going to leave. It. Very different right now. Very, very different. Um, How long is that session? It, 15 minutes? I don't know. Okay. It literally, like, they were all going off on command. And I would say, okay, it would hit the one by the, the kids' bedroom, and then it would come to the ones outside the door, and I'd say, come into this one, and then it would go off. And you kept saying a woman, kept saying my name. Mm -hmm. It was like in a row. It'd be like, Steve, uh, oh, Steve, Steve. I said, um, so I'm like, is the killer still here? Mm -hmm. He said, yup. And he said, mass murderer. Mass or, murderer. Dude, it was wild. Really uncomfortable. Good. <laughs> really, really uncomfortable. But now these have all stopped. You should, have heard, here. You should have heard the footsteps, the knocks, the voice. Dude, that voice hurt my feelings. What, it, was it like a woman or was it a man? No, no, it was like this deep, like, gravelly, like, male voice. It was awful. We're going to come out there. We're going to talk to you. We have to. We have to go out there. See if we can get it in. Um, just in the hallway again, I think, for a few minutes, a little bit. And then I think, I think we go back downstairs for a little while. Mm-hmm. And see if there's anybody down there. Do we do another Estes downstairs? Either downstairs or out in the, the kids' bedroom over here, I think. They love that idea. Oh, my God. If you're the killer and you murdered these people, step back from that device so it stops making that noise right now so we know it's you. What? So the one behind it goes off? Yeah. So like a step it's back. like a step back. And that's the second, time, that's second or third time it's done that, it, and it'll back up like that. Step away from that one, too. Set off the one in the kids' bedroom. Step back. Step back from that now. 
Now grab the top of the device on the floor in the bedroom. Grab the metal rod so that it lights up and changes colors. You did it earlier. Do it again. That's this one. It's like it's st yeah, a step forward again. We're coming out there. What are you going to do when I get up? We're coming out there to talk to you. You're going to try to stop us? What does that mean? Step away from that so it stops making that noise. All right. And again. Steps back. Now there's two gone. Can you get all three of them to go off? Two. two. All three. That's so weird. You have no idea what just went down. You're gonna lose your mind. It was crazy. Dude, that voice is unreal. Really like unreal. It was loud? Yeah. So loud. Alright, we're coming out there to talk to you. Alright, let's go out um, quickly, yeah. do a couple sessions in the hallway out here. Okay. And then I almost wanna set up some static cameras mm -hmm. and leave the house. See what they do. Leave the house for half an hour. Yeah. Just leave all the equipment in here, see if we can get them to, to close the door or walk around or do something, but when we're not in here. Yeah, let's do it. All right, let's get out there and do a couple of sessions and then, and then set up some static cameras. Cool. Let's go. All right, so we're gonna do a couple EVP sessions really, really quick out here since we had a lot of crazy, crazy activity just going on. Um, I'm gonna roll on the DR60. He's gonna roll on the other digital voice recorder that records the entire time. We'll review that after we leave the house. Mm -hmm. So even though we may not catch something on GR6, we might be catching something on there or vice versa. Um, so I think that'll be cool. We're gonna keep that running the entire time even if we stop this to replay it back. Yeah. Um, but I think we do two quick sessions and then we set up the static cameras in here, one up here, one downstairs, and we leave the house for half an hour. See what happens. Set up the equipment, leave the house. There'll be nobody in here. See what goes on. Yeah, let's do it. All right, I'm gonna step over here right. by the bedroom. You're recording? On? You're recording, okay. Velisca, second floor. All right, and I got the DR60 right here. All right. You got that on the? Yeah, on the ledge right there. Okay. Yeah, come down here a little bit. All right. Is this where the footsteps are coming from? Dude, it was coming from anywhere out here. Like, you could just hear it in the hallway. But this was the Melmeter in particular that was going off with the REM function. I okay. could see it reflecting on the wall here. Right. And that voice came from somewhere out here. It was so deep. So deep. Awful. I didn't hear it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Two questions each, ready? Okay. One, two, three. Did I hear you talking when I was in the attic? Do you like it when it's one-on-one? -on -one? Were you trying to scare us out of the house? Can you say something audibly for me or make a really loud noise? One, two, three. Let's put this back. Yeah. Playing back the audio on the DR60, tagging on the other recorder. Did I hear you talking when I was in the attic? Did you want to get one on one? Were you trying to scare us out of the house? Can you say something audibly for me to make a really loud noise? That's so bizarre. It's super quiet. All right, let's do one more quick and then we'll set up the cameras. Okay. All right, we're gonna leave the house, but we're gonna set some stuff up 
that you're more than welcome to interact with while we're gone. There's going to be nobody in here for the next half an hour. This is your house again. You get to take it back. You'll be in control. Do you like that? What's your name? Did you touch my back? Why do you keep hiding from us? One, two, three. All right. We're going to leave the house, but we're going to set some stuff up that you're more than welcome to interact with while we're gone. There's going to be nobody in here for the next half an hour. This is your house again. You get to take it back. You'll be in control. Do you like that? It says I wasn't in control. Listen to that. Listen. I wasn't in control. Yeah. What? what did that just say? <gasps> did that just say Reverend Kelly? I heard Reverend. Dude, it goes Reverend Kelly, literally. You go, what's your name? Ready? Reverend Kelly. I'm going to play that again. What does that say? I cannot make it. Uh oh, they're more talkative now. Yikes. Hmm. I think they like the idea of us leaving the house alone for half an hour. I wasn't in control. I wasn't in control. Reverend, he pled insanity. He wasn't in control of his mind. Dude, I just got goosebumps. I did too, because this whole thing is yeah. the house messes with oh you. Oh my god. So he like, saw the shadow. Dude, I have such in. goosebumps right now. Like, such chills. It's literally like the whole back of my head's like all tingly yeah. and everything. Literally though, like so he says Reverend Kelly and he wasn't in control. Like he was psychotic, right? right. So like he pled insanity. He confessed to it and then right. he recanted it. Right. So what if he did do it? Right. But it like what if he had like a like what if he did have some sort of mental disability or mental illness and yeah. like he had a psychotic break for yeah. some strange reason and that this house night. preyed on him for whatever reason. Right. And he came here that night. Like he said, he was just out walking around. The man saw a shadow figure outside and followed it in, grabbing an axe. You know what I mean? Like, and obviously, that's told him. That's right. Yeah. So maybe he had some sort of psychotic break and he wasn't in control. Right. It and wasn't never, him. Right. That's so wild. Dude, that's absolutely crazy. I have such goosebumps right now. That's really cool, though. That's nuts. So I guess just set up the static cams and let them have the house for half an hour and yeah. see what see what they get. I want to leave that voice recorder running in here while we do that though. Yeah, let's do just it. Just in case. Absolutely. All right, let's go to it. All right, guys, if you enjoyed that crazy Estes session and all that stuff that was going on, don't forget, drop down, hit that subscribe button, turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any of these uploads that are coming up. We're going to some really crazy places that are bound to be active and have some awesome evidence. So drop down, hit the subscribe, turn on the notification bell. Now we're going to leave this house completely empty for the next half hour so you guys don't go anywhere. Let's see if it comes alive when it's empty. All right, guys, we're gonna do one last Estes session before we go to bed. We're down here in the first floor bedroom where Lena and Ina Stillinger were brutally murdered. Um, right over here in this area behind me. I'm gonna be sitting in this chair right here going under the Estes session. We have no other equipment on. We're gonna go straight Estes session, see if we can get anything, um, see if Dylan can hear anything while I'm doing it like I was hearing. So we're gonna do this, and then it's time to go to bed, guys, because guess what it is, 6 a am right now we have been up all night investigating so this is it let's do it and we'll try to get some sleep after upstairs in one of the other bedrooms yeah hopefully they'll let us sleep let's hope let's hope all right here we go all right i'm gonna be putting my hood up so. yeah all right not a bad idea thanks
We'll put this right there. Yeah, guys, it's cold out. I don't know if you saw me shaking and I was doing my ass this, but it's freaking cold out. So I'm standing right in the doorway here to the living room here, in the kitchen. This is where we started the night out yes, yesterday. Is the Reverend still here? What's your name? So let me just start here. My name's Dylan. I had the headphones on upstairs, if you remember, in the attic. Again, is the Reverend still here? Do you see us? No. I don't see a female voice. I don't see you. No, it probably sounds weird, but that's why Steve has the headphones He's on. Coming for you. Excuse Sound me? like the same female voice. Excuse me. There's a noise out here too. He's coming for you. Who's coming for me? What's her name? You know. I know. Reverend Kelly. Dad? Dad. That didn't sound like a kid. Oh, he killed a dad first? Did you kill JB first? Is that what you're saying? He was the first victim? Had to. Had to. Why did you have to? Whatever you want to tell us. Come up to the guy in the headphones. Steve. Again, we're in the Stillinger girls' room. Where they were killed. That was weird. That was like a guy's voice. And I shit you not, it sounded like I said, we know it's you, Reverend. We know it's you, Reverend. So. It, it was, it said it super weird. It was just like, we know it's you, Reverend. Again, so he was like the main suspect. Like he completely admitted to it. He admitted to killing everybody. He said that a voice had told him he felt like he was climbing Jacob's ladder, going up the stairs. He followed the shadow person. He picked up the ax. He fully admitted to it. And then later he just tried to plead insanity and he was let off. You know, like what kind of sentiment would did he? Did he? Is that what he did? Is that the true story? Because it's like this house is supposed to mess with you mentally, right? So what if the Reverend was having a mental break of some sort or he was vulnerable for whatever reason? He saw the shadow yeah. figure. Yeah. So he saw the shadow figure, he followed it in. That's what happened. You took advantage of the vulnerable reverend. You used God to try to coax him into killing these people. I just got really cold, like really, really cold. Goosebumps like all over me. I just heard like a, two really slow footsteps. Like slow, someone like slow. He's coming. Sick, awesome. Who's coming? Literally, my first thought is whoever is the one that coaxed the Reverend into committing this crime, right? It's coming. I'm calling it out. I'm trying to get to the bottom of it. Hear the footsteps. It's coming. Sad. Sad. I just jumped when he said that. So rage. Jumped. Sad rage. Two most prominent emotions people report feeling in this house overwhelming sadness and then just like blind rage like Johnny the volunteer who works here the guide walking us in he said you need to keep your emotions in check if you start feeling weird step out he said that he's worked here for the past 20 years and he still has days where this house affects him I keep pointing my camera out here because I feel like something's gonna like pop around that corner 
Like it's, but then this closet is also where the gentleman saw that light before he stabbed himself. So it's like, I'm in the worst scenario right now, pretty much. Coming. Coming, again. It's coming, he's coming. Who? Who's coming? That was weird, it was like, it was like a whisper going. <sighs> Who is him? That was super, it was like really breathy. Give me a name. I could not make out what that said, it was a guy's voice. It was like three or four words, I couldn't, I couldn't quite make it out though. I keep having to like look back and forth because I'm expecting something to pop out over here. I'm hearing all the footsteps and stuff coming from this direction. Like, who's him? Give us a name. We want to know who influenced Upstairs. The Upstairs. That's where I've been hearing everything. That's oh. got really cold again. Are we naive for asking? Really cold. I got goosebumps on my arms. Were you naive for asking who's in control here? More footsteps. Again, right here. Think I got, and then I couldn't make out what the last word was like. Think I got something. Couldn't make out that last word though. All right, we're going to bed in a few minutes here. Why can't me? Why can't you give me your name? Whoever influenced the Reverend, whoever controls this house, whoever tries to scare people out of here. I'm there. What's your name? Right there. Right where? I don't see you. I'm gonna pull him out in a second. Do you have any final messages? Any last words before we go to bed? There was blood. There was blood. And people died. There was blood and people died. I'd say that sums it up, yeah. That was all the female voice that said that. There was blood and people died. That is, I don't understand. Like who that could be? Maybe Sarah? Or Catherine? Catherine was young though, so maybe Sarah. I don't know, I'm gonna pull him out. Um, we're gonna get ready for bed. Any last message? Your name? Why you still think you have control over this place? Anything? Murder. Murder. You have control over this place because of murder. All right, pull them out. Morning. It's cold. <laughs> oh God, did any of it make sense? Yeah, okay, so, um, oh my God, it's freezing. you said that you were talking about the murders, and I said, which one did you kill first? And you said, dad. And I said, why? Like, why would you choose him? And you said, had to, which makes sense. You know, if he was breaking in the biggest right, threat. The adult. Yeah. And you said, Reverend, um, I know you did it. It was like, no, it was weird. It was like I, we know it's you, Reverend. Or yeah, something like that. And the way like that. It, it was said was super weird. It was almost like, not. I don't know how to describe. It, it wasn't like uh, accusing. It was more almost like, like disappointed. Right. You know what I mean? Like we know it's you, Reverend. Well, you got to think too. After he was acquitted, like the rest of the town's probably like, yeah. Chances are we know it's you, right. but we can't do anything about it. You know. It got pretty weird. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty cold. You kept saying he's coming, um, and not to hear footsteps. Like, oh. yeah. And I said, who's he? And you just you would change the subject. Sorry. So I think whoever it is is the one that controlled the reverend. Mm -hmm. um, so whatever entity is here. Uh, as I was about to pull you out, too, I said, do you have any final messages? Like, why do you think you still have control mm -hmm. over this house? And right before I tapped you, you just said murder. So, so they think like the murder gave them control or something. Yeah. Which I guess they would have had control at that point. Right. All right. So, yeah, on that note. Time for bed. Yeah.
Let's set up the static cams. I think we're going to leave one in this room. Yep. I think, and then we'll bring one up and put it in the, the more children's room where we're going to stay. Mm. And uh, we'll see if anything happens. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. All right, guys. We survived another night in a haunted house in America. This time, the Velisca Axe Murder House. No, I feel like once we kind of separated, once we were more vulnerable, um, that's when they started to come out. I mean, it's exactly like the murders happened, yeah. though. The guy struck when they were asleep. Yeah. So, very common theme. Um, I wouldn't say that we uncovered the mystery. Mm. You know, we don't have solid evidence that it was Reverend Kelly, but right. the fact that, you know, basically alluded to the fact that he had a mental breakdown or that the right. house affected him. He almost you know? well, he wasn't in control. Something was controlling him. Mm -hmm. And, you know, maybe when he left the house that night, he was fine. There was nothing wrong. But whatever he saw in the yard drew him in, had some sort of control over him, brought him in, possibly made him commit these, these terrible crimes. Yeah. And, you know, he got away with it. And it's crazy. It's a sad, sad case. Um, you know, six kids being brutally murdered like that is something that you don't encounter really anywhere else. Um, but I definitely think separating when you were under and I was by myself more in that aspect, like you said, it just, it, it amped it up. Things got more, they got more comfortable to come out and try to confront us. I mean, the noises, the footsteps, the voices, your interaction with the Estes, the thing on my back. I mean, we had a lot of really crazy things happen during that time period. Um, you know, and we have that whole section that we don't even know what we uncovered yet. So we have to review what we got um, from when we left the cameras in the house. So I'm excited to see what we got during that time period when the house was completely alone and uh, go from there. But I think, you know, it's one of these places that I'm glad we finally got to come to. Um, we had a very interesting night. There's definitely, definitely something going on here. Absolutely. But I think we need to return sometime in the future and uh, see if we can get some more answers and maybe this time we know to isolate longer. Yeah, so absolutely. We'll see what happens, but we got a lot more to do. So let's get going. Let's go.